there's this 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 fight that's inside of you and this talent that's inside of you that is above average but there's some people who who don't have the skill set that you have or the skill set that I have that are able to break away from the cycle that we found ourselves in and so the human question that I want to ask you uh, and then I promise you this will be the last question is what and how can we take the opportunities that are really only here for people who are extra, extra, extra hardworking or extra, extra talented or just extra lucky. How do we take that and bring it down to a person who isn't born super talented, who isn't born super lucky and who, who may not have the hardest work ethic, but how do we get these opportunities so that other people can break out of that cycle that you broke out of? It's a big question. It's ambiguous, but I just want you to just talk about that. Well, I mean, look, a, a lot of this is, it requires systemic change. And, and so, I mean, this is, you know, obviously what, what I think of every single day and how can I make my little dent in this world and, and how can I throw that pebble into the lake and, and have it reverberate with way we will affect others, right? And then how do we combine that together to actually create a movement to change um, the the situation that so many people are in? Um, I, I don't think that there's one answer to that, and, and I don't think that there's one person with one answer. So I think that I always go back to, look, you never know the impact that you can have on someone else's life simply by sharing a kind word, simply by um, uh, perhaps uh, giving, a, you know, making a contribution to a, a, a local uh, organization. I mean, it could be so many different things, right? For me, I always say my parole officer never envisioned that I would be where I am. I never envisioned that I would be where I am. But she looked at me like a kid. And she had the opportunity to revoke my parole. That was the moment where I realized that I needed to do something different, that I could possibly have the opportunity to do something different. I was sitting in that courtroom in my orange jumpsuit, in my body shackles, with my wrists and my legs and, and my belly chain. And I was seriously convinced that my life was over. But when she told the judge, that she was recommending that I be released to the custody of my father as opposed to revocation of my parole, that literally changed the outcome of my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that she did not think that it would have the impact that it did. And to this day, if you talk with her, she says that she was just doing her job. So what I would say is that just for every individual out there who's listening, you never know when you will change the outcome of someone's life. And and that's all that we can do. I, I gotta I gotta No Solomon, stop. No, no. Leave it <laughs> leave it there. Drop the mic. Go ahead, Solomon. Go ahead. Go ahead, Solomon. There's, no, 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 no. Stop, stop. No, Solomon. No, we gotta leave. <laughs> oh, I just oh. uh Lucy, oh my goodness, please come back. Please, uh we wanna hear you talk more. Please do I'm more. I'm happy to. Please speak more. Just talk to the people because I one thing my grandfather told me that didn't come true until I until a year ago. He said, if they hear you, you've got it. Anybody that hears you, you've got them. So just talk as much as you can, and I know you'll be so successful. So thank you so much for joining Doing us. Doing our best. Thank you. Lucy Flores. Listen, I want I want everybody. When that digital phone banking comes up, I want you to, um, everyone listening, I want you to go to her site and phone bank digitally. Uh, if you can afford to give something, you have a little extra money after you pay all of your bills, send some money her way. We need voices like this in, um, in Congress. My, my problem, <clears throat> I'm, getting, I'm getting into some commentary, so if, I, I might say some things that you guys might have to disavow later, so I'll just give you as that warning. Uh, that's the trigger warning. <laughs> um, my, my, my problem with this whole thing is um, a person like this should be the person that the establishment says, we need this type of voice. Let's elevate this voice. Let's, let's take this voice and push them into Congress. 
because I I researched you know I researched her 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 opponents. I went to all their websites. Um, I, I saw what they stood for. I listened if they had audio, if they had video. I listened to it, and and I'm telling you, Lucy is the person to run and win that seat. And I, for the life of me, cannot tell you why in on green earth they would pick someone else to be the anointed one from the Democratic Party. You know why? Because I think some of the judgment has, there's there's a lapse of judgment happening uh, in the establishment, which is why you actually have this insurgency that's fighting back against the establishment, because the establishment is not making the right decisions anymore. Lucy is the right decision for that district, no questions asked. Maybe Harry Reid is just getting old in his old, you know. And that, no, no, no. He's he's losing wisdom in his old age. Instead of gaining wisdom in his old age, it seems like he may be losing wisdom because I just don't see uh, the guy that he picked being anywhere remotely as impactful for humanity <laughs> as as Lucy. Uh, listen, I have a caller who has been so patient. Um, caller, you're live on the air. What's your name, comment, and/or question? 